What's going on, everyone? So the quarterfinals for the in-season tournament is a lock. Uh, you have a slate of games on Monday, December 4th, and then follow that up uh, with the slate of games on December 5th. Uh, the two one seeds play on the 5th, and then the uh, number two seeds play on the Monday, December 4th. Um, really like these matchups. I think that they're going to be really good, really entertaining. Uh, we have seen teams take this very serious, and... I do think that now you're in the knockout round. You have one win and you're in, right? And you advance to the next round. You got a little bit of that, like that March Madness factor into it. Um, obviously, there's always the uh, possibility of a team just getting hot for a game and winning that. But that's kind of what the NBA wants, right? They kind of want that that element of like unknown, that element of mystery, right? That you know, uh, yes, like you look at a team like Milwaukee and Boston, they're probably going to be the team representing the East in this cup, just like they're probably going to be the team. One of them is going to be the teams representing the East going into the NBA Finals. Probably how it's going to go. But the idea of like, hey, look, Indiana is leading the league in scoring. If they get hot, right, Boston's not there, all of a sudden they get eliminated. You know, same thing with the Bucks, right? You you don't have to be better. You don't have to be better than a team for a season. You just have to be better than them for one night. You know, it's the it's the NFL, the the March Madness, it's all that stuff. Um, you know, same thing with the team like the Lakers and the Suns. I mean, you could be looking at the the matchup going into the NBA Finals for all we know. I mean, the Lakers haven't looked so great, but you know, Phoenix was looking rough, but they've really turned it around. Uh, but the point is that you get these just exciting matchups, and I'm really pumped for all of them. And so I want to dive into some of these matchups and kind of give my thoughts and opinions. And of course, I want to hear yours. So let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's get into it. I'll uh, start with, you know, the Boston and um, the Indiana Pacers matchup. Look, Boston, I mean, you can make an argument, it looks like the best team in the league. They have been fantastic. They got all these new pieces. And it's like they've played together for years, right? It's like Boston has, like this team has been together for the last five years and they just haven't skipped a beat, right? They have been very good. Um, they're 14-4, and four, so they're extremely tough to beat thus far this year. Uh, they're sitting at the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. But you got a team like the Indiana Pacers who, yes, they're 9-7 and seven on the season. Uh, defensively, they are like historically bad defensively. Like the Pacers cannot stop anybody, but they are an extremely high power offense. I mean, they're like historically good offensively. Like last year, Sacramento had like one of the best point totals in like the history. And right now, thus far, the Pacers are like blowing that out of the water. They are just lights out scoring the basketball. Uh, Halliburton is a big part of that, big factor in that. Um, so look, the Pacers are a team that can just get hot, and they could put up 120 to 130 points, and if Boston struggles and they don't shoot the basketball well, I mean, they could get beat. Now, if I had to bet on it, I'd say, you know, Boston probably runs through the Indiana Pacers because, as I mentioned, the Pacers can't defend anybody, so Boston should be able to score essentially at will, and then even if it is a tight game, I trust Boston to lock down defensively more than um, the Indiana Pacers, and then plus... Uh, you got, you know, Derek White, you got um, Drew Holiday, two guys that can just make things difficult for Halliburton. And he's their engine, he's, he's their motor. You're never going to stop him. But it's just, again, about making things difficult, making things challenging. So my guess is Boston is going to come out uh, in this matchup. Um, but again, love to hear thoughts and opinions. Next up, uh, the Sacramento Kings and the New Orleans Pelicans. This could be a very interesting matchup. So like, there's a, in my opinion, that that Celtics Pacers matchup, I think is going to be the most, or for me at least, is the most fascinating, right? I think the Knicks and the and the Celtic or the Knicks and the Bucks, which we'll touch on here in a moment, could end up being maybe the best game, but I really am curious to see how Indiana shows up because they might be able to shoot the lights out and beat Boston. Um, that's kind of how I feel about like the. 
Pelicans game, right? Like, I think the Suns and the Lakers game is going to be the best game to watch because I think they'll both just kind of be, you know, at, at, at a deadlock. Um, but I think, like, Sacramento and New Orleans, they could just be a high-powered, not really much defense, um, down-to-the-wire type game. Right, I mean, look. Every time Sacramento plays, like, there's so much fun to watch. Right, like, if you saw that Warriors game last night, like, that was ridiculous. Right, Sacramento can never really be counted out. Um, obviously, New Orleans, they uh, are dealing with a McCollum injury, right? So, like, they're not fully right, um, but they've been serviceable, right? Like, they've been solid. They're not like great. They're not a team to like write home about. They're at 500, but. They've had these games where they've looked really good, um, and then they've had these games where they've looked atrocious, right? Where Sacramento, a lot of the same things too. Like Sacramento's had games where they look brilliant, and then they have games where they just look terrible. Um, so my question is, do both of these teams show up? If they do, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I really do. I think it's going to be a, a very exciting game. Um, but... My concern is that, like, I could see this, I could see one of these games or one of these teams blowing out the other. Like, I could see Sacramento showing up, shooting the ball well, playing well, and New Orleans just doesn't have it and just has one of those games, and this is like a boring, lopsided game. That's kind of my concern with it, but I think if both teams show up, like, this might be the most, like, exciting game to watch, right? Like, um, I think the most intense game, the most, like, like playoff-level game, uh, in the West, again, in the West, um, will be that Lakers-Suns game. But I think this one will just be like, you know, the the kids just having a good old time in the backyard. Like, I don't know, I, I, I may be completely wrong, but I do feel that way about this. Um, Knicks and Milwaukee. Again, as I mentioned with like the Lakers and the um, and the Phoenix Suns, kind of how I feel about the, the Bucks and the Knicks. Like, I think this matchup, is going to be a fun one, right? I think this matchup is going to be one of those games where, like, it's a grind, and it, it it's coming down to the wire, and it's got that playoff atmosphere feel, and Dame's hitting some big shots, and Brunson's hitting some big shots, you know, and Giannis doing Giannis thing, Randall's doing Randall things, you know, maybe Barrett gets gets a little uh, gets a little seat at the table, right? And I could see this game just going back and forth and just being a complete game of runs over the course of that matchup, right? And coming down to the stretch. Um, Milwaukee's been good this year, right? They're number two behind the Boston Celtics, 13-5 and five on the season. Um, I, I mean, Milwaukee's had a lot of games that have came down to just heroics. From like Giannis and Damian Lillard. So down the stretch, if this is a tight game, I just trust Dame and Giannis more to close it out and get the win than I do Brunson and like Randall or Barrett or whomever. Um, so I'm gonna go with Milwaukee. Like again, I, I think that I think you're talking about the the Celtics and the Bucks again, meeting in the in the you know, semifinals, uh, winner is the representative in the East, just like what will happen, or I think will happen, um, in the NBA playoffs, right? Assuming everyone's healthy, right? Or relatively healthy, as healthy as possible when you're, uh, getting to the playoffs. Um, I do, I just, I think they're the two teams that are just head and shoulders above everybody. I think there are some teams that obviously can make some noise, but I think it, ultimately it'll be the, the Celtics and the Bucks, And I think the same thing's going to happen in this cup. I just think Milwaukee, if the game's close, I just trust Dame and Giannis to, to pull it out. Unless Dame is having like an atrocious game, which he's had, a, he's had some clunkers this year, right? He's had some rough games. So that wouldn't surprise me at all. But going with that, um, then the Lakers and the Suns. As I mentioned, I think the Kings. I think the Kings will be the ones that end up Shooting hot, getting it done. Like, if I had to get in bet on it, I would take Sacramento. Um, I personally think whoever wins this matchup, though, between the Lakers and the Suns, win, win, the, win the West. 
and they'll be the representative in the West. Um, Sacramento has had the Lakers' number thus far this season. Uh, the Lakers have had Phoenix's number. You know, Lakers are 2-0 and against Phoenix. Uh, obviously, there's the concern for the Lakers of like, you know, hey, it's hard to beat any team three straight times in like a month span, and yet you got to play the Phoenix Suns, who they're not like a Spurs or a Detroit or something. They are a championship-level contender who, since the last time they have played them, is on a seven-game win streak and playing some very good basketball, and Booker's back, and it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting matchup. This one, I think, will be the one that's like the playoff level, just intense, down to the wire, who's going to win this, who's going to clutch, who's going to hit the big shots. Um, The Lakers are at home, right? So the fact that the Lakers are at home, they've been excellent at home. They've been not very good on the road. If this was in Phoenix, I would probably say, yeah, absolutely, Phoenix wins this. Um, I'm going to go with the Lakers, right? I... No, some people are going to listen to this and look at this and go, well, of course you are. You have a Laker channel. You're a Laker fan. Of course you're going to go with the Lakers. I just, I, my only concern is it's hard to beat a team three times in a row, essentially, in, in a month span, right? Usually when you play those teams, it's, it's spread out a little more. So I do have the concerns there, but the Lakers have, again, been very good at home. I mean, they're a completely different team at home. They're going to be at home for this tournament and... If they win, they have essentially home court all the way through, even in the championship game. It's not in crypto, but it's in Las Vegas. And you could throw a rock from LA to Vegas, right? Like, so all the fans, the stadium's going to be packed. Those guys are going to be rooting for the Lakers. So I think, and I also think that the, the Lakers have elevated and stepped up. And you can tell that this is important to them. Right, they they want to go get this. I think LeBron knows how important this is to like help build confidence and chemistry. Um, look, I, I I wouldn't rule out Phoenix at all, <laughs> right? I mean, Phoenix has has been great, but I uh, the Lakers have beaten them twice, right? Like, so it's one of those things. Like until you beat them, you know, it's kind of hard to think otherwise. It was like how it was with the Lakers and the Clippers. It's like every year. Lakers can't seem to beat the Clippers. Well, guess what? The Lakers beat the Clippers this year. You know, so it's one of those things. Like, I got to ride with the team that that has proven that they can win, you know, thus far. And especially when Phoenix has had, like, double-digit leads, like 18-point leads in both games and blew them both. Lakers won both in the fourth. So I got to ride with the Lakers. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Who are you riding with? Um, I'd love to hear, you know, which teams do you think win each round? Um, you know, have a feel, whatever your thoughts are. Let me know down in the comments below.